After an interesting discussion on craft, toys, and enterprise, we move on to understanding special children, special needs, and how toys work for them uh, with our next speaker, Professor Preetesh Bhatia. Professor, Professor Preetesh Bhatia is a postgraduate in product design from MIT Institute of Design, Pune. He has worked as a research, research fellow in National Innovation Foundation, Ahmedabad, where he was mainly involved with value addition, research, and development of grassroots innovation. He has launched a few of his conceptual products in the commercial market in the area of food and hospitality. All his work largely focuses on employment generation and micro entrepreneurship, and his core interest lies in complete, complete product innovate, innovation cycle, right from designing, prototyping, testing, to mass manufacturing and scaling, scaling it to independent business models. His work has been covered in print media and has also been published at, at the national level. He has few design patents to his name, along with a couple of other applied under the Patent Act. His project, Portable Food Kiosk, was shortlisted for National Innovation Awards 2015. Currently, he serves as an assistant professor at GLS School of Design, Ahmedabad. Today, he shall discuss about toys for special needs. Over to you, Pritish. Uh, thank you, Arish, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, uh, I'll share my screen and just check whether it's visible or not. Yeah. Is it visible? Good to go? Yeah, it's good. Okay. Uh, so hi, audience. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for inviting me. Uh, since I've already been informed that uh, we are running late on the schedule and the session needs to go on at a pace. So I'll not take much of the time and I'll right away dive into the session. So today's session was very important for me as it's related to not just uh, people who are involved with a lot of difficulties in get, uh, getting involved in the mainstream industry, but also for people who have not been focused upon even from design industry. Although we do a lot of projects at classroom level or maybe at a research level, but when we think, uh, think of solutions at market, we hardly find them. So I hope that you enjoy my session and we at the end, we make sure that something value has been generated. So if you see a uh, lot of toy sessions has already been happened during the uh, Ahmedabad Design Week, which is focusing on toy. So I'll just quickly run through what is purpose of toys for me. So first thing which comes to my mind is entertainment. So toys are traditionally some of the oldest entertainment forms of entertainment having been used for tens and thousands of years. Second point comes to my mind is engagement. So children engage with them on multiple levels, helping them to develop the way in which they communicate and interact with their surroundings. Third point, which comes to my mind is education. Toys since childhood has been used as a tool for educating, not just a child, but also at a senior age, we tend to uh, re, uh, come maybe uh, re-identify ourselves through toys. So they are often used to augment information and uh, make uh, basically make friends with toys and then we learn through them. And uh, final part is the experience. So children tend to attach their experiences to their toys and in turn associate them with unique stories and categorization. So I hope that this is what we have all we have learned through the previous sessions. Next for me is the, the toys are for various age groups. So we have we all know that right from our birth till maybe we have our own child. That is the age group where a lot of toys come, we come across and we tend to enjoy at each moment whenever something comes up, something new comes up. So these are a few of the categories of uh, toys or maybe the age groups. First one uh, is about 18 months. So generally toys uh, at this age until 18 months, they are used for developing physical reach, gripping, grasping, holding objects, as well as uh, to help them communicate and socialize. Then comes the category of 18 months to four years. So this is when they further, a uh, child generally further develops their physical interaction with objects. Uh, they improve their cognitive and motor skills and it also helps them improve their hand-eye coordination. Uh, generally, this is the time when uh, parents or maybe the learners or the educators, they introduce kids to simple problem solving skills. 
then comes the age of 4 to 8 uh, this is the time when we encourage children to pursue physical activities as well as uh, we tend to create uh, maybe some complex skills building using some toys and then comes the age group of 8 and above so we all are from 8 and above so during this time generally complex situation arises this is the time we when we start connecting with our toys and we start gradually from this uh, activities uh, many times they become our hobbies and then even sometimes they even become our careers this is the time when we start realizing that there is a difference between a toy and a game so generally games have rules and toys are like we make our own rules uh next is so what is the influence of our toys so toys has lot of influence if you see the first influence the major influence the toys have is on our society and economics if you say any toy any child who is maybe just on the street side uh maybe living in hut or maybe a, a child who is playing with her parents in a mercedes or bmw more or less the toys have same value in child's mind it's about playing it's about playing so the concept of toys are universal to humans regardless of their economic situation society heavily influences the type of toys and the way in which it engages with the child from the society comes our culture the culture uh, the heritage and the beliefs that children are exposed to influence the narratives of the toy generally when uh, a certain cultural background people uh, uh, maybe mold their kids they uh, the child will always have that memory of that cultural impact of the toy with from his or her culture then comes the story so from the culture comes lot of narratives lot of story so each toy regardless of its origin has a story attached to it it it's not just a matter of physical engagement but also a way a children exercises his imagination then from the story comes characters so each story if you say will lead to a character in itself the toy itself becomes many a times itself becomes a character for the child and last comes the imagination in all of these cases and situations toys are a primary purpose of acting as the physical manifestation of one's imagination so even if when at this age if i hold put uh, maybe take some product or a toy in hand i'll have my own imagination running then next influence is it's on the development this is the one of the most critical part where a toy is handed over to a child like after the engagement part maybe the fun part this is where the parents poorly focus and this is where the even the companies who are designing the toys the designers who are involved in designing the toys they focus upon so the development the very act of playing with toy engages children in many ways helping them in developing not just their cognitive motor abilities but also their social abilities and last this is the most critical part for me and this is today's topic it's about special needs so very few people have known that special needs is a place where lot of influence is there by uh, engagement of toys so i want to uh, take this opportunity today to take this topic in a bit of depth so special needs the use of toys are not just important for normal growth of children but also incredibly helpful to engage most both children and adults with special needs and disabilities helping them grow past their limitation so this is my topic for today special needs so what is a special need special needs describes individuals who require assistance for disabilities that may be medical mental or psychological i would again like to repeat special needs describe individuals who require assistance for disabilities that may be medical mental or psychological so now we would always feel connected whenever we find someone who might have who might not understand things at a particular pace it doesn't mean that they are lack of skills or maybe lack of understanding you might find that after today you would start realizing that he or she might be a person who has some kind of special need in a certain manner of uh, maybe certain aspect of his life few hard facts So India's population in 2011 as per the census was 120 crore plus what was the percentage of disability i am i will be shocked so it's around 2.2% so that is huge 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 in our country if you divide it further what are the disability ratios mental illness it was around approximately 7 lakhs cognitive disabilities the abilities 
uh, which includes sight, speech, and hearing, it was whopping more than around 1.2 crore. Movement disability, 55 lakhs. Multiple disability, 21 lakhs. Mental retardation, 15 lakhs. And others, around 50 lakhs. If you see this as a number, you'll say it's huge, huge. And still, do we find toys in this, uh, this category? You doubt. I would like to get into the types of special needs because that is something where you'll start connecting when you see this category. So majorly there are 22 types of special need conditions and countless more are there which are lesser known and still under study. I would like to give a few examples. So you might be aware of autism. You might be aware of Alzheimer, but there are many more. You might be aware of blindness. You also might be aware of developmental delay, but there are much more to it. This fetal alcohol syndrome, we might not be aware that it is also a kind of a special need. Hearing impairment, one of the most common ones. Learning disabilities, again, one of the most common ones. Now people in India have started get accepting it that no, a child can be special. And th there are ways and means in which this uh, uh, special need can be catered. Then there is muscular dystrophy, paraplegia, quadriplegia. Then sensory integration disorder, people with reading disability, stroke and traumatic. So there are in and around, these are major documented 22 special needs. And when you get into detail, you will find there are so many sub variations in each of them. And then innumerable N number of other uh, special needs, which are still under consideration and still under study. But these are major ones. So now I would like to take you through a few examples of toys which are used for special needs. So Alzheimer. So what is Alzheimer? Alzheimer, it's a progressive disease that destroys the memory and other important mental functions. So for each of this disease, I have found one or two examples so that you also understand that toys do cater to this kind of special needs. So there's a therapy called a Stangle Relax Therapy. What does it do? It engages in repetitive hand moments, often stemming from a nervous energy that needs to be appropriately channeled. This toy works beautifully for all dementia patients. It also is useful for focus, bringing a focus during attention and attention at school and at home. So it engages in repetitive hand movement. Autism. So what is autism? It's a serious developmental disorder that impairs the ability to communicate and interact. It's a very common thing. There's a product or sorry, there is a toy called Squeaks. It helps apply pressure to connect and disconnect, uh, disconnect to any surface. We would have played with uh, maybe air bubbles. We would have play, used this uh, toy. Uh, I still remember in my childhood, there was a plant uh, thorn, which we used to apply it in, at any surface and then put, pluck it out and then again do it. But then it's, uh, it's, it's used for a disability or it's used for uh, maybe addressing a special need. Uh, how is it useful? It, it improves the fine motor skills. It improves your interaction ability. Then there's one more game for autism. It is called as the game of perfect balance. What you need to do over here, you just need to roll the dice and whichever number comes, you need to strike a pose for it and try and find a balance. It, it, what it does, it helps improve the balance and coordination between the body and the body parts. Next is apraxia. Apraxia is... Uh, it finds difficulty with skilled movements even when a person has the ability and desire to do them. There's a toy called as Dimple Digit. What it does is it's a silicon bubble toy which gives sensory inputs from the raised numbers on one side and bumps to the other to learn how to count. It's useful. It helps develop, sorry, it helps develop resistance by working and strengthening fingers and develop fine motor skills. It's also very visually stimulating. If you see the colors and all, it's also very visually stimulating. Uh, next disease, uh, next special need is Asparagus. It's a developmental disorder affecting ability to effectively socialize and communicate. Uh, there's a toy called a snap circuit motion. What it does is 
it works by building an array of moving components like a air fountain a motion detector or a colorful animal themed merry go round mini car that drives around the room a plane that moves with vibration what it does is it helps anchor age imagination experiment with new ideas and also make their own story so people who play with this kind of toys they tend to gradually improve their uh, imaginatory um, power and also they start making their own stories blindness this is one of the most known and uh, common thing it could be partial it could be uh, complete but then there are lot of development in this direction and one of the most common toy you will find for this is braille reader so what it does is it has a embossed uh, embossed toy which helps kid to learn numbers and alphabets it incor incorporates braille for tactile experience and audio for auditory feedback it not only teaches and improves the ability to understand but it also develops your uh, tactile uh, feel next special need i would like to take is cerebral palsy uh, it's a conditional disorder of movement muscle tone and posture a common product or toy used for this is ini bean it's an innovative shape sorting box which encourages fine motor skill tactile exploration and experimentation when we see this kind of toys we feel nothing special but it it takes a lot of design thinking and a lot of efforts to come across this kind of products next is a developmental delay so this is uh, refers to a child who has not gained developmental skills expected out of him or her as compared to others at the same age and this is very common you might find people in and around you who might have this disorder or this kind of special need and they are not addressed so there is a toy which is called as piano popping fun here the person needs to keep pressing and exploring the sounds after every note the flying spears fall back into the pipes and <coughs> which are ready to launched again it helps improve the fine motor skills sensory learning and cause and effect learning next special need is hearing impairment again as blindness this is also one of the common and uh, most aware special need so it occurs when there is a problem with or damage to one or other parts of the hear a, a toy which is being used generally by people by doctors is magnetic alpha tab it what it does is over here you need to hold the magnetic pen follow the arrows to write particular alphabet what happens over here is the vibration makes writing fun and provide an auditory information one of the another very common one is learning disabilities a learning disability is a reduced intellectual ability and difficult difficulty with everyday activities so the product, uh, toy is shake and make words what you need to do over here is you just need to give the dice dome a shake and watch as the dice set, settle into their slots to reveal a random set of four letters quick thinking vocabulary skills creativity and problem solving next toy is again ini bean so if you see a simple toy which has multiple applications again the same utility it has next special need is multiple cirrhosis a common product or a toy is mini squigs again as it was uh, mentioned for squigs this is similarly a smaller version of it where you just you can put all the squig parts together and form various uh, structures how is it useful again it helps find uh, your motor skills and improve your interaction ability another product or another toy which is very common in from our childhood is boom whackers it's an impact based toy where it needs to be struck to generate sounds it develops brain activity using sound and music next special need is muscular dystrophy it's a group of genetic disease that causes progressive weakness and loss of muscle mass this is rare but it is very uh, still in india you found lot of people with this kind of special need a toy which is common for this particular special need is pin again 
<laughs> I'm sure that our child or maybe in our childhood, we have played with this kind of toy. It's a stacking toy made of coated plastic. What this toy does, it, it usually stimulates children as they practice their hand-eye coordination and early engineering skill. Next product is Little Help Broom Set. So this toy sets featuring a large broom, a hand broom and a dustpan. So kids can feel just like their mom and dad doing household chores. It brings timeless pretend play to life and in doing so engages their muscular skeletal system. Next special need is paraplegia. It is a complete or partial loss of muscle function. A toy which is uh, generally used to uh, treat this kind of uh, people with this kind of special need is door pong. It's a ping pong without a table. The goal is to hit the ball back to your opponent every time without missing. It enhances hand-eye coordination, concentration, reflexes, cooperation, and much more. Next is Ivan's Hinge. It's an irresistible fidgeting toy which works by engaging users with micro movements and in doing so exercises the fine motor skill of the user. Next special need is quadriplegia. Again, it's the disease or maybe the special need is different, but the toys would be very much the same. Quadriplegia refers to paralysis from the neck down, including the trunk, leg and arms. So already we have uh, discussed the spin again toy and even the events hinge. Next special need is sensory integration disorder. So sensory processing disorder is a condition in which the brain troubles receiving and responding to information that comes in through the senses. If you see all the toys, they are some or the other way connecting with our senses. So rainbow music bell, this toy provides kids with a wonderfully intuitive first time music making experience that's fun and easy. It improves senses and helps brain to communicate well with those senses. And the next toy is Dino utensils. So this over here, if you see the grips, uh, there are easy grips and unique little tools that make food time more fun and making use, uh, making learning make learning to use utensils super easy. It improves our physical senses while touching different textures and patterns. Next special need is speech and language delay. So a speech and language delay is when a child isn't developing speech and language at an expected rate. So there is a toy book which is called as Oh Yuck. It's an interactive book which helps improve speech impediments by exposing the child to fun gross facts about the body and the world around them. Next is alphabet puzzle. So this I'm sure most of us have played with an ideal introduction to alphabets with an interactive tactile wooden puzzle. It improves speech and language based problems. Next special need is traumatic brain injury. So traumatic brain injury is mild traumatic Brain injury may affect brain cells temporarily. More se serious injury can result in bruising, torn tissues, bleeding and other physical damage to the brain. There's a toy called as brain food. Slurry. We have played with it all the time. It was a viral product a couple of years back. So it's a uh, kneading elastic putty which channels fidget energy so the user can focus mentally. It is ideal for networking right and left of our brain. Uh, last special need I would like to uh, discuss is vision impairment. Visual impairment is a term experts use to describe any kind of vision loss, whether it's someone who cannot see or someone who has partial vision loss. One very common uh, toy is acuity. Acuity over here in this toy, the players, so it's more of a game. So players must race against each other or work towards discovering and matching hidden patterns in the tile arrangement. Whosoever can match most will win the game. So it works by engaging the visual cortex of the user. I would bring to your notice few renowned companies who are currently working on special need toys. So first is fat brain toys. They design the toys which are specifically focusing on different diseases of the special needs. 
then there is special needs essentials special needs essentials provide adaptable toys daily living aids therapy tools and more to help improve the daily life of special needs children then there is playability toys playability toys develops smart designs and manufactures developmental toys and other products for home and clinical environment fun version it's in startup it's this startup specializes in designing through provoking toys and games for special needs focusing on steam learning and there's there is safer toys uh they design personalized toys so they help building marvels me mechanic gears or simply strategizing with simple games of dog and bone so these are few of the companies which are uh, currently focusing on uh, toys for special uh, people with special needs next is the trends so what are the trends currently going in toy industry first it's personalized toys so these are the toys with specific technical customizations like the incorporation of sensors switches and tracks second is plush toy we all have our favorite moment with plush toys so plush toys are standard soft toys water toys this toy specializes in incorporating water as a major aspect of themselves water guns and balloons then there are steam toys so this is the buzzword right now in toy industry steam toys anywhere you see there are games which are being built over steam uh, fundamentals or there are toys so steam stands for science technology engineering arts and math as the name suggests these are the toys that lean towards more technical even intensive activities exercising the mind of the children then there are experiential packaging or unboxing experiences which have become an integral part of toy experience in today's time next is diversity so diversity is an important aspect to make lot of inclusive toys uh, so that kids can relate uh, with them lot of companies are also focusing on environmental uh friendly toys because this is where uh, even audiences have become more aware and they are focusing on sustainable designs last is toys focused on creativity so these are the toys that engage the creative aspects of the child uh all of this if you see lot of uh digitization has come up with all these products and lot of design thinking has started being applied if we see that is the fundamental reason why this entire fest is being given the theme of toy design there are lot of national level innovation challenges going around toy design there is a call for local vocal for local so all of this if you see this there is lot of trend where new product development can be done so what's the scope this is the most impactful slide i would like to uh, put forward 120 crore population in 2011 beyond 140 crores now 2.2% was the uh, disability ratio you will be amazed looking at the figures 0 to 9 years 32 lakhs 10 to 19 years 46 lakhs 20 to 29 years 42 lakhs 30 to 59 years 9 to 2 lakhs 60 plus years 55 lakhs and this was all in 2011 we are a decade older now with more 20 20 plus crore more population and i'm sure the numbers have gone up not brought down so what is the scope as th uh, seen through various case studies shared by me the toys are available for addressing this special needs but it is observed that there are very limited number i'm sure most of you won't be aware of most of the toys or most of the special needs and many of you might have not even have connected toys with special needs so that was my agenda for today's session looking at the statistics and demographics it is clearly evident that this is the area where lot of development scope is brought over here i would like to show you couple of videos how uh, toys are brought into mainstream for special needs and companies and startups are building uh, a system uh, around Uh, requirements of special needs of the millions of toys that will be rung up wrapped up and given to children this holiday season very few are made with kids like little abigail anderson in mind as a baby abigail suffered seizures which left her developmentally delayed and unable to play with the toys built for other 4 year olds 
she needs toys that uh, are kind of well suited for her, that react a certain way, that um, are easier for her to manipulate, um, that teach her lots of cause and effect and that kind of thing. Abigail and other special needs children often need toys that are modified, like this one. It has a large on-off switch that she can find and work easily. But toys like these are almost impossible to find, which is why Abigail comes here. Hi. This is the Toy and Technology Library at Ohio State University Medical Center, one of only a handful in the country. Here, kids like Abigail can find toys that are just right for them. Most of the switch activated items and the specially adapted toys you can't buy locally. You have to order from catalogs and they're costly. For example, a toy like this in a store might only cost $10, but this one, modified for special needs kids, is nearly $50. But here, they're free. Just like books at a library, families here can come check out toys and even specialized computers to take home and try out. Uh, this is really leveling the playing field and just adapting uh, a device or a computer or a toy that every other other child uses uh, and just modifying it slightly so that they can enjoy it fully. Best of all, they choose their toys under the watchful eye of a therapist who not only finds toys kids will enjoy, but will learn from, which means both kids and parents always leave happy. At Ohio State University Medical Center, this is Clark Powell reporting. Bye, Abigail. <laughs> so this was the funda of a toy library. If this is the situation in Western world where we always keep on looking, then uh, just think what would be the situation for in India. This is one more uh, company which has come up with another innovative idea of how to teach kids. Research shows that if the student's in the right mindset and they get their sensory needs met, they're going to be much better learners. Uh, hands to your heart space. Take a deep breath in. <sighs> the sensory room is probably my most important piece of the day. Students go to the sensory room in order to calm their bodies and get all the emotions out and stabilize themselves so they're ready to learn and they're happy. When we designed the sensory room, we actually took the entire room apart. We carpeted the floor so that we could absorb some of the sound. We put the shades on the ceiling to change the light. So when they walk in that room, they feel the change. My class specifically, we utilize the room once a day for a 30 minute break. First thing that they do is go on the ball and they bounce to a metronome. It's really a way to ground them into the space and give them some sensory input before we have them go out into the room. We're going to do our rotation now, okay? Yeah. So there's different stations in the sensory room and some of my students love specific stations. One in particular loves the punching bag and the ropes. He's able to get all that anger and frustration out, so that calms him down. Whereas another student, I know he needs calming movements, so he's on the swing going back and forth. Another area in the room is the crash pad. You will see students that have sensory issues bump into walls, bang their head. So what we've created is a safe space to crash into. And then there's the light wall. You could use your hands, you could use your feet. There's different games that are programmed on there. Girl. We also work on balance and coordination. The walking path works on all of those, and they have to right themselves, correct their body in space. We have 10 pound slam balls. Some students just need to come in, pick something heavy up, and throw it. That's the essence of a sensory room. You're putting materials in there that are appropriate so a student's not throwing a chair. And at the end, when they finish with their stations, they lay on the floor and they're squished. So everything that we do in there is predictable. There's a set sequence. We're all done with sensory room. We're going to walk back to our class. So after the sensory room, they're able to focus more. They're quieter and their hands are to themselves and they're able to listen to my directions. We're here, we came from sensory room. We're ready to learn. How does this sensory room make you feel? Happy. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, so 
for conclusion i feel that we need to be much much more aware of the limitations with kids or in any age group they have uh, having any kind of special need second is we need to create or design toys which are much easily accessible and affordable so that they can go to the masses if if you realize if you speak to any therapist you will realize that the early uh, the detection the easier it becomes for the child to take get cured and the numbers would reduce next is after all of this it would be great if we empathize with the struggle that comes with special needs and encourage our coming generation and students and maybe all the startups and the government policy makers to encourage the development and use of more inclusive and universal toys lastly this all would lead to empower the people with special needs to grow past their limitations and become part of our mainstream uh, community so that was it from my side thank you very much and i would like to uh, give thank you credits to amdabad design week and the host iub and uid to my institute my director dr anil sinha my colleague professor muktiar sheik and my students mr janil shah and dwanit rawal who helped me make this presentation thank you wonderful pritesh that was a very informative session uh, there's, there's a question uh, uh, that yes. we have yes uh, as you one of the viewers have asked as you said that the number numbers must have shot up for special needs as of 2021 yes by what margin are look are you looking at and if there has been so much exposure to special needs toys how do we manage it to the indian market where people buy products on price and quality uh can you repeat the question harish uh, slightly a longer one but uh, yeah. the first one is um first part is as you said that the numbers have increased from 2011 what is your estimate that it so, was so it's it's very uh, see i didn't find a report of 2016 census so we don't need to find the numbers it's not if if we are not able to address 2011 market size then i am fit pretty sure that 2021 it would be bigger and maybe next year mm -hmm. if we have another census it would be higher so for what matters for all of us as a design community is maybe address a smaller audience let's pick up amdabad let's if if we are next year doing again a toy challenge let's make something for them let's make a category of special needs so let's start from a smaller audience and gradually things will definitely move forward wonderful the second part of the question is also on how do we engage it to the indian market where people buy products uh, on price and quality so uh, to whom sir this question is raised uh, you you are not aware you are not aware of the people who have all the money and all the luxuries in their life and they have done everything for their kids and still their kids cannot be cured of this special needs so target should be come up with good solutions and gradually with government subsidies or maybe uh, private players investing the price could be reduced so that is not a challenge the challenge is to bring focus right now the whole idea of taking this topic was as a designer to bring empathy in all of us and focus on this particular topic because that is the core if that thing comes up the pricing is something which can be reduced through change of material or maybe uh, uh, startups like doing a library thing which that was the case study right which i shared so that all can be managed that is not a bigger challenge the bigger challenge is to bring the focus to this uh, sector where there is lot of development yet to happen wonderful uh, pritesh that was pretty elaborate in terms of how you uh, put the information across uh, thank you very much um have a good day yes and we'll take a couple of minutes before we start the next session with uh, anita savika sure sure thank you, thank you.